Adventures in Illinois Law, Part 2, Draconian Legislation at the County Level, read by Shane Radliff, the author, originally published at libertyunderattack.com on May 27th, 2015. Part 1 of this two-part series can be found at libertyunderattack.com forward slash LUA dash news. Introduction. When it comes to the federal government, most people expect a draconian, freedom-destroying legislation. Although it seems like most people don't understand that government is government, no matter what level. Governments always expand, they always rob the citizens of more and more money over time, and they always restrict freedom, most of the time for the common good, regardless of their federal, state, or local title. In part one of this article, I described what I saw when I attended the McLean County Board meeting on May 19th, 2015. I also gave the readers a basic premise as to what kind of legislation this is from the introduction of that first installment. In part two, I would like to present to you a piece of draconian legislation coming right out of the local county government. The document that we'll be looking at today is titled Mental Health Action Plan by the McLean County Board, released on May 19, 2015. Analyzing the Legislation As I began reading this, I immediately saw a major issue. In the background section, it discusses multiple previous attempts to curve the mental health and substance abuse problem in McLean County. I already knew what I was looking at, and it was a reform of a reform that will again expand the size of government quite significantly. Government failed multiple times on this issue, and now they want more money and more power because of their failure, much like how the National Security Agency fails to increase national security. It goes on to explain a rising trend of co-occurring mental health patients and drug offenders within the, within the community, but the first significant part is the next few sentences. Quote, a team of court officers, led by Chief Judge Elizabeth Robb, identified the opportunity to develop, to develop what was then an emergence, emerging philosophy of providing a specialized judicial proceeding to address the increasing challenges these co-occurring mental health patients create. The court worked in concert, in concert with the McLean County Board and community leaders to obtain congressional support for a Department of Justice drug court grant. This grant was authorized in September of 2008, and McLean County became of Illinois' first drug court, end quote. In the article linked to Chief Judge Robb, it reveals that Governor Rahner named her to a state reform panel on improving the Illinois prison system. My assumption that this was a reform to another reform was proven correct. In that, ex in that excerpt from that document, it shows federal involvement by the Department of Justice in the granting of the first drug court in Illinois, headquartered in McLean County. As I explained in part one, the war on drugs is a complete and utter failure, and this piece of legislation is, a, is another governmental expansion under the guise of the war on drugs, otherwise known as narcotics prohibition, both in McLean County and also the federal government as well. Moving along, the next example of federal involvement at the county level appears a paragraph down the page and again led to a further expansion of government and even a new council. Quote, in 2008, McLean County also requested that the National Institute of Corrections, NIC, complete a report on the adult jail system within, the McLe within McLean County. This report was completed in January 2009. The major outcome of this assessment was a recommendation to form a criminal justice coordinating council, end quote. In the following paragraph, we learn that the DOJ drug court grant expired in 2009. The McLean County Board then, through its Board of Health, appropriated local funding to continue the McLean County drug court. Subsequently, Illinois state law has mandated the provision of a drug court in all jurisdictions. The previously mentioned Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, CJC, CJCC, was established on July 1, 2009, and its tasks were to examine policies and procedures at the McLean County criminal justice system. In layman's terms, they wanted to examine the most recent reform to see if a reform of the prior reform was needed. <laughs> I know that may sound redundant, but it was intentional. It appeared that the federal government was proud of the success of the CJCC, and in 2013, McLean County applied for a second DOJ drug court grant, a Bureau of Justice Assistance, BJA, mental health court grant, and grants from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, for both drug and mental health court. To recap, in just five years, McLean County has been involved with at least four federal governmental entities. I think it's also a mission worth a mention in passing that the BJA has an abusive track record of unjust profiling of American citizens, and I am not happy with our involvement in the McLean County government. Although, <laughs> I would rather see government abolished, so I suppose that statement doesn't mean a whole lot. 
In the following couple of years, McLean County requested the NIC return twice to review various provisions and also complete a number of reports. In January of 2014, the McLean County Board issued a request for proposals for jail needs and assessment and pre-architectural architectural design. In February of 2014, the McLean County Board Executive Committee convened two interagency public-private work groups, one to identify community, health ne community mental health needs and one to identify best practices. The following month, in March of 2014, the Bloomington Normal and McLean County Economic Development Council brought community leaders together and they traveled to Washington, D.C. to meet with legislators and staff members from the Department of Health and Rehabilitative Services and the Department of Justice to discuss community challenges. To conclude, this action plan includes immediate and long-term steps for the community and the county board to consider and act upon. Before I move forward, I think there's something important worth mentioning. The morning that I was going to the McLean County board meeting, I was, con I was conversing with a family member. He said he thinks it's a great idea that I'm going to the meeting, as local government is easier to hold accountable. I quickly told him that that is not why I'm going, as reformism has proven time and time again to be a complete waste of time and a failure. The questions that need to be asked are, if there's, if there's so much federal government intervention, is it really local government? Or is it just an extension of the federal government? And lastly, wouldn't it be realistic to drop the entire notion of trying to reform from the ground up when the federal government's tentacles are so deep inside the McLean County government? I would like to hear an answer to that question from the local Libertarian Party. Moving along, the next part is titled Executive Summary. They give quite a few reasons as to why the prior reform was ineffective, ranging from a lack of interagency communication and data sharing to the mental health support in jails and prisons not being sufficient, and lastly, the lack of mental health practitioners, to name a few. Later on in the executive summary, summary they mention that this action plan engages a varied group of organizations, including state and federal agencies, law enforcement, judicial and court officers, and other stakeholders. In the following paragraph, it states, and I'm paraphrasing, that the community is committed to a multi-step planning process that can achieve concrete results. I bet that's what they said about the last reform, too, but look at where we are now. In five years, they'll be right back in the same position, reforming yet another reform. Continuing on, if you're a McLean County resident, this next part should make your wallet hurt. It states that today the majority of mental health funding comes from property taxes, which is another reason public schools in Illinois are millions of dollars in debt, and that the revenue funding streams need to be, need to be diversified to pay for this community obligation. There are already a couple of short-term goals that they have already fulfilled. In 2014, the Bloomington Federally Qualified Health Center, FQHC provider, Chestnut Health Systems, was awarded $500,000 to provide expanded mental health services. Next, the FQ, FQHC at the county's Fairview campus was expanded to provide more people treatment. Lastly, the State of Illinois, Depart State of Illinois Department of Human Services committed an annual $700,000 investment to allow Chestnut to establish an adult mental health crisis and substance abuse detox program for McLean County. Chestnut Health Systems made out quite well with this one. $1.2 million in 2014 with another $700,000 annually in addition to the expanded facility at the Fairview campus. The next section is titled County Board Action Objectives. There are about 20 of them on this, on this list, but for the sake of time, I'll mention a couple. In the other long-term objectives session, section, one of the goals is for McLean County to become the payer of last resort for mental health services. Another non-surprising one from the amount of federal intervention touched on briefly so far is that the McLean County Board wants to continue to engage federal and state legislators regarding community needs. To conclude this section, you can clearly see this action plan is heavily focused on drug users. It is also easy to see that we can expect taxes to go up in McLean County to help pay for this costly reform. The amount of federal intervention and assistance is also highly prevalent. It seems the mindset is constantly one reform away from utopia or one law away from utopia when both have been proven failures time and time again. Although, what can you really expect from a bunch of statists that believe in the most dangerous superstition known as government? I've got the solution to this grievance. A good place to start, if the several American legislatures wanted to, would be to repeal the Federal Controlled Substances Act of 1970 or, for example, the Texas Controlled Substances Act of 1989. From reading the document, most of the crucial information has already been provided. The rest is bureaucratic jargon and quite a few tables and charts. 
Yet there are still some important points to touch upon. The Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, CJCC, has been mentioned multiple times so far, but in, addi in addition to that, one of the tasks is to create a McLean County Behavioral Health Coordinating Council, BHCC. In short, the BHCC would be the umbrella for organizations in the behavioral health systems and will be a conduit for information sharing. The members of the BHCC would be appointed by the chairman of the McLean County Board, the current one being Matt Sorensen. On page 18 of this document, there is a system structure for behavioral health. I am showing you this to provide an example of the bureaucracy that exists locally. The majority of residents in this county have surely never heard of any of these administrations, groups, boards, or coordinators. Note the tax levy and budget section. On page 19, the task is to appoint a mental health advisory board and also calls for the expansion of the role of behavioral health and development disabilities coordinator. On page 20, it calls for the development of standardized data collection guidelines, as well as McLean County becoming the, tax, the, be, becoming the payer of last resort. In other words, the poor SAP taxpayers. On page 21, they call for the exploration of a grant writer or a grant coordinator. And on page 23, they call for the creation of interagency training. The next important section is titled Housing, and it starts on page 46. They call for an addition in size to the McLean County Jail for numerous reasons. One of them being the need to provide a therapeutic environment for those incarcerated who cannot tolerate placement within the general population. Next is the expansion of the welfare state. In the section titled Short-Term Action Plan, they seek additional federal housing vouchers and funding for construction of subsidized housing and to work with rental groups for an additional housing option. I would imagine that would be similar to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, their Fair Housing Equal Opportunity Program, only on a more local level. In the section titled Crisis, on page 55, there is a behavioral crisis flowchart. There's nothing substantial about this chart except there is a mention of involuntary commitment. There are no definitions, no procedural lists or charts or anything, which is certainly interesting and something I need to dig further into. The rest of the document is almost worthless, so that will conclude the analysis of the legislation. The war on drugs has only brought with it overflowing prisons, destroyed lives and families. It's contributed to the complete implementation of the police state, civil asset forfeiture, otherwise known as legalized highway robbery, and in this instance, draconian legislation that is passed under the guise of solving the drug problem. If there is one thing that should, be, should have been learned by now, it's that tossing someone in a government dungeon for a vice does not work. It also creates a black market that increases violence, gang activity, and overall crime. The legislation that was analyzed in this article will not solve a single aspect of the drug problem. It is an easy hypothesis to make, just look at how many prior reforms have been implemented before this one. There will be a few for sure ramifications from this legislation. The taxes will have to go up in McLean County to fund this. Also, the size and control of government also increase, will also increase as that is what happens with every single reform. There are a couple of, poss a couple of possibilities that could also occur. With the focus being on drug users, we could see an increase in civil asset forfeiture as well as an increase in drug rates. The mention of involuntary commitment without a definition is also a major issue. The real people with mental deficiencies are not those that use vices. They are the ones that ignore all real statistics and empirical evidence and would rather waste time and taxpayer money on legislation that is bound to fail. So what is the solution? The first one is already semi in motion and more states need to follow suit of Washington State and Colorado, the de decriminalization or legalization of drugs. The final solution is to look at all the evidence of reformism failing throughout, history of, throughout, the, throughout the history of government and stop wasting your time doing something that doesn't work. Withdraw all consent and make yourself as individually free as you possibly can. The first of those that I would recommend is canceling your voter registration. Government is government. It doesn't matter what level. In this case, it was county level, but with lots of assistance and grants from the federal government. All levels have the ability to pass irrational, illogical, draconian legislation. The issue isn't the size of the, size of the government, and it's not a failed system. It's working just as it's intended to, and it's about time we open our eyes and see that. If we don't, the ramifications will be deadly. Author's Note all of the sources are either linked in the article or can be found in the reference document that will be uploaded along with the article. You've just heard Adventures in Illinois Law Part 2, Draconian Legislation at the County Level, read by the author Shane Radliff, originally published at libertyunderattack.com 
on May 27, 2015. And part one of this two-part series can be found at libertyunderattack.com backslash LUA-news.